Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Worldwide Weather Watch. Today's March 6th and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery right square on the central portion of Africa. And I'm gonna talk about Congo tomorrow and I'm not gonna tell you why just yet. You'll have to turn in and see just what I'm gonna talk about there. But if we look at across the Indian Ocean, we've got some tropical cyclones under development here. This one's gonna pass across Madagascar and probably hit the east coast of Africa and move back out of the water, redevelop and then hit Madagascar again before it becomes extra tropical and starts to move back towards the South Pole. And this one's going to be kind of out in the middle of the ocean there, not affecting anybody, but still a pretty strong tropical system out there as well. So if we take a look, and speaking of tropical systems, Australia, Alfred is still there. This slow moving system is going to be producing some huge amounts of rain, some big waves and some strong winds for the coastal areas. So this is really one of the bigger stories across the planet right now as we speak. And you can see the Australian government uh, Bureau of Meteorology. Uh, uh, yeah, we've got some strong winds with this. And uh, again, a slow moving system going to be dropping a lot of rainfall with it as it continues to move across the region over the next couple days. So you can see the 6 p.m. March 8th. Look at 12 a.m. March 9th right now. Not moving too quickly there. It's going to be dropping some huge amounts of rainfall. And if I put this into motion, uh, I go out about 26 hours and you can see 25 uh, centimeters, about 250 millimeters there is about 10 inches of rainfall. If I keep scrolling ahead there, you can clearly see we get up towards 475 millimeters there. That is getting close to 20 inches of rainfall for some isolated locations. Again, these very slow moving tropical cyclones are some of the biggest flood threats on the planet. And eventually it will push back off of Australia and back out over the Pacific Ocean and then moving towards the South Pole as it becomes an extra tropical system, but not before dropping just huge copious amounts of rainfall. And also a big wave action is ongoing with this system as well. And again, you can see the slow mover there, some big waves all the way on in through the day Saturday and even through Sunday as well before they start to die off. Now, just a heads up across the Southern Hemisphere there, that they just went into their meteorological fall, just came out of summer, and we are the exact opposite. We just came out of the meteorological winter in the Northern Hemisphere, and now we're off into meteorological spring. Taking a look at the USA, the lower 48 states got some wind advisories for the Northeast, but we've got a Colorado low ejecting here. A lot of winter storm warnings stretching from Wyoming into South Dakota and on in through Nebraska as well. Show you more on that here in a moment with this Colorado low right there, and you can see on the north side of that spreading some wintry precipitation across out in towards Iowa and then eventually out towards some of the Great Lakes there and it, it is kind of a weakening system and then we've got another low kind of moving out of, you know across the southwest here and then over some of the Texas Panhandle bringing some snow and possibly some severe weather out ahead of that as we go on in through and if I back that up that Saturday afternoon Saturday morning Saturday afternoon and then as we go through Sunday probably some severe weather again across some of the Florida Panhandle and southeast as well. Now, I always like to show these visual diagrams. This is two meter dew point. We are looking at the North Pole right there. There's Greenland. You can see Japan is there, the Hawaiian Islands, the lower 48, and there's Africa over there, and there is Europe. So if I put this into motion, it's interesting watching this because you can kind of see how these mid-latitude cyclones will draw up moist air out in front of them. You can kind of see that Colorado low right there, or down across the lower 48 states. And then if I put that into motion, you can kind of see this process just repeat. The cold air across the northern portions here, the North pole and some of the mid latitudes is much drier than it is across some of the tropical regions and it's kind of fun to watch the interaction of the heat transfer of the planet with one of the some of these frontal systems and the dew point temperatures so also something else I want to point out, and one of the things I'm going to highlight in today's video is Tornado Alley here across the lower 48 states, North America. This is probably, without a doubt actually, the most prime area for severe weather. You've got a big mountain range, you've got a desert to the southwest, and you've got access to very warm, moist air and cold, dry air moving down from Canada. So all those things line up, and that's why severe weather is so prevalent here across the central portion of the USA known as Tornado Alley. You really would have have a hard time drawing up this severe weather threat on a general synoptic region wide scale better than what Tornado Alley is. I mean, just perfection with the Rocky Mountains and the Gulf of Mexico there. And again, the Southwest Desert and the cold air coming down from Canada. So this diagram kind of wraps that or brings that together for you here. Tornado Alley here and 
<clears throat> honestly, this would stretch off a bit more and you get plenty of severe weather down here across the southeast as well as these storm systems move across. But you can see this would be the, where the dry line is, where this warm, dry air comes off the higher terrain. And so it, this also brings something known as the elevated mixed layer, which will cap a lot of the activity during the morning and early afternoon hours before finally the surface heating gets going enough where you break that cap and you can just absolutely grow these huge, some of the biggest, baddest thunderstorms on the planet. And that's why Tornado Alley is such a favorable setup. Then the access of, or the access to uh, the Gulf of Mexico, the very warm air moving back up into the central plains here is a big part of that as well. And this is the sounding. So this, I believe, yes, May 20th on 2013. I was actually out chasing this in Oklahoma on this day. But you can see this cap. So this is the temperature profiler. You're at the surface. You're about, what, 70 degrees or so. And you can see the temperature drops off a little bit as you go up. But then look at that nose of warm air there. So you can imagine you can't get cloud uh, development further than that. Just would run into that cap right there in the atmosphere. So that keeps things capped. And then we go to 18Z here, which is about, what, 10 a.m. So you're looking about noon time uh, Oklahoma City there and again you can see the cap is still uh, present there but the surface temperatures are warming and then you continue to get these uh, cumulus building and trying to uh, punch through this cap and eventually it did so and this was the EF5 the more tornado of May 20th that eventually came through with this very favorable wind profile at the surface and aloft eventually broke through this cap as the surface heating continued on in through the day so the elevated mixed layer kind of keeps things primed through the day and doesn't let that convection break through too soon so when it does that convection can be extremely strong and the parcel of air you can imagine would be something like that there'd be this huge cape profile very strong robust updrafts enough to enough to create an ef5 tornado in this case and then you can look through things like the 25 year uh, average number of tornadoes per state by month all tornadoes this is from 1999 to 2023 and you can kind of see how this comes on april there's may in the center and there's june right there and you know some states are still keeping some active tornado activity all the way on in through august there as well and of course march starts to ramp up there a bit also and you can see texas kind of in the red there as well and then again here is the summary of recorded ef3 ef4 and ef5 tornadoes from 1950 to 2006 six and you can clearly see the pattern again one of the most favorable setups the most favorable setups on the planet here and you know i what my mind does is i, I kind of dream about other planets across the entire universe there's probably some other earth-like planets out there there's probably actually quite a few of them actually and i th would have to think that this setup would probably be in the 95th percentile for favorability of these severe kind of storms you know if you could break it down just by earth-like planets here but yeah perfect setup there with the rocky mountains the gulf of mexico and the desert southwest off to the west so anyway, back to uh, the global forecast here. I'm going to put this into motion. You can really see the heavy rainfall that some of these tropical systems can drop. There's Alfred right there on the east coast of Australia, the one that is supposed to come towards Africa. Um, and then you can see the one out in the middle there. But you can also see some other systems coming into the Pacific Northwest, the west coast of North America, California being pretty wet here over the next week or so. And you can also see the intertropical convergence zone ongoing at times as well. Now, let's take a look at the South Pole. So um, if I put this into motion, there's Honde, I believe that's how you pronounce it, and you can kind of see the heat transfer taking its, uh, you know, completing its path, let's call it, as that system moves down back and gets caught up in the westerlies there. And look at uh, Antarctica here with its, you know, kind of a protective cold air around it, these octopus arms swinging around. These would be where the mid-latitude cyclones are developing. So let's back that up. And I want to show you that system. It's moving across the top of Madagascar right there. You can kind of see that cold core system right there makes landfall back into Africa, comes back and hits Madagascar again, then moves back out over the open water and finally gets caught up in the westerlies and you complete the heat transfer from some of the very warm tropical systems there, bringing their heat back towards the polar regions. So if we take a look at that one more time, we're going to take a look at that system and you can see it moving across Madagascar back out over the open water, develops pretty quickly there and slams some heavy rainfall, some strong winds into portions of Africa, doesn't spend too much time over land, comes back out, redevelops yet again, and then slams back into Madagascar. And when these go over land, they weaken quite dramatically. Then eventually this gets caught up in the westerlies, as you can see, and races off to the east. So fun stuff there. 
And uh, yeah, so I was also looking up the Southern Oscillation Index value. You can also see that the pressure um, is starting to switch up a little bit here. This is the difference between Tahiti and Darwin, and we are starting to go down. We're getting a little bit closer to the zero line there. So this is kind of a sign that La Nina is on the wane and this is the walker circulation so basically what i was showing you is the pressure is still higher over tahiti versus darwin australia so we still have that walker circulation kind of hinting towards la nina but as you saw the difference is dropping off dramatically and if we take a look at the equator the equatorial waters there you can see that we are starting to warm up here on the coast of South America and warmer water is starting to emerge. We measure these ENSO conditions between 120 and 170 out here. So uh, you're looking at only about half of the area is below normal now. So I don't know if this is even going to be classified as a true La Nina this entire season we just went through. It was acting like it at times. But, you know, I, we've only had one of the three month running totals here at or below La Nina temperatures. And you can see the European kind of has it where it did spend, you know, one, two, three months. Maybe it'll end up being just barely borderline La Nina, but we are clearly going to be warming things up, as you saw in the sea surface temperatures. And we're probably going to be headed towards some type of a neutral scenario as we go through next year as well, which can be pretty active for some portions of the planet as well. Now, something else I like to show at times is lightning strike density. This is over the last 24 hours. And if I just put that in motion, you can see the frontal system coming and moving off the east coast. The Amazon rainforest and the intertropical convergent zone out there as the planet's weather patterns just continue to churn non stop so um, this is a wide view of things equatorial look at the entire planet this is two meter temperature so as we go through let's go to, towards this afternoon in fact let me update that because i believe we have 18z data and we do let's scroll off here here towards the, the afternoon hours and you can see you know the usa relatively chilly here you know you just got out of summer for the southern hemisphere so things are still pretty warm across australia and a lot of africa as well and you can see it was just winter across the northern hemisphere greenland portions of siberia pretty cold antarctica is always cold but we put that into motion and you can if you look closely you can see the outflow boundaries kind of bouncing around the deep tropical convection dropping their gravity waves these will move along the ocean surface and run into other outflow boundaries and create additional thunderstorms and the process will repeat and you can also see the diurnal and the nocturnal cycles for example there's the diurnal warm-up there across south america then you go through nighttime and it cools down sun rises back up again and you warm up again you repeat the process and you can also see the mid-latitude cyclones and the frontal systems moving across in the two meter temperatures as well so always fun to look at that stuff and yeah, tomorrow we will talk about the Congo and Africa. Today we talked about Tornado Alley a bit, and we'll go ahead and do that. Yeah, and I'll share some fun facts about Congo, Africa. Kind of an interesting thing that goes on there as well. So anyway, hope you guys are liking these videos. Click like and subscribe. I will talk to you guys tomorrow.